Please welcome to the stage, Questlove. How you doing? All right, so uh, when I was young, how you doing? <laughs> so when I was young, you could go into the record store and buy the new De La Soul record. And that's what I did. That's what everybody did. Uh, they were pioneers from the very, very start. Founders of the, the Daisy Age, pillars of the native tongues community, visionaries in putting philosophy and humor and hip hop, uh, not to mention bringing the funk and the soul of those samples or of the early eras back to the brilliant life in their music. And uh, they broke out the gate with one of the greatest debuts ever, Three Feet High and Rising. Um, me personally, I had an even more vivid memory of, of hearing their second album, De La Soul is Dead, in 1991. You know, I was cutting church and sitting in my friend's car and marveling at the way the, the group wove uh, together its songs perfectly. I think it's one of the most perfectly seeked uh, album of hip, not even hip hop of all time, um, but extended narratives and sharp fragments and you know, all those songs, Peace Parts, Rose Skating Jam Named Saturdays, Let Me In, Millie Pulled a Pistol on Santa. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> I can hear them all right now in my head, you know, one after the other. Uh, but when kids today, you know, when they go to digital music stores, they won't find De La Soul is Dead or Three Feet High and Rising or Stakes is High or Balloon Mind State or any of the group's other classic albums. Why? because their music isn't available. Uh, as a result of clearance issues, uh, the fact that the band's record label can't or won't uh, clear the original samples, the albums that have changed hip hop and changed my world personally, um, they aren't available on the largest digital platforms in the world and the big pipes that bring the music to the vast majority of consumers. You know, there's me, myself, and I, but there is no me, myself, and iTunes. I came up with that one myself. Um, so Three Feet High and Rising has been preserved by the Library of Congress, but it's not available for sale. And this hurts the band, but it also hurts consumers, and it hurts history. And when you go to the hip hop section of these digital sales, uh, or streaming services, and there is no De La Soul to be found, or very little De La Soul to be found, is a disservice to the extreme. It's like seeing a digital box of 70 Soul without Bill Withers, or a digital picture of uh, Mount Rushmore without Jefferson. So earlier this year, De La Soul decided to do something about it, a very genius thing. What they did was revolutionary, because what they do is usually revolutionary. They made their entire catalog available for free download. And it started on Valentine's Day because it was a gesture of, wait for it, love. It lasted, it lasted for 25 hours because that's a way to mark their 25th anniversary. And uh, they followed that with another free release called Smell the Daisy, to enter sound, y'all. Great acronym. Uh, which puts their vocals over the great Jay Dilla's productions. And the struggle over sampling and how to treat artists who came up in the age of golden hip hop, the golden age of hip hop really isn't over. The stakes remain high. Uh, but for De La Soul, they have proved that they are at the vanguard, always fighting that good fight. Always putting their music above, you know, always putting their music and their fans above corporate concerns. Let's take a look at the video. A brief history of sampling and hip hop, or why you can't find De La Soul online, legally. 1985. Hip hop has moved out of the Bronx and onto the charts. Curtis Blow is the first artist to use a sample drum track, looping Pump Me Up by Trouble Funk, to his hit, If I Ruled the World. 1988. Cheap sampling devices hit the market and artists like Eric B and Rakim, Thinking of a master plan. The Beastie Boys, hey, lady. 
public enemy all push the limits of this new technology. 1989. De La Soul drops three feet high and rising, sampling everything from hollow notes to Funkadelic to Otis Redding. Come on, man. 1990. Hip hop crosses over and dominates the charts with sample based tracks. But then the lawyers came. Vanilla Ice. Sue. Biz Marquis. Sue. De La Soul. Sue. The golden days are over. Fines in the court cases have taken their toll. Artists now rely heavily on a single sample to compose their tracks. 2000. Physical album sales plummet. Music listeners now go online to download or stream music. Due to copyright concerns around digital distribution, many classic hip hop albums are left behind. Valentine's Day. 2014. For 24 hours, De La Soul gives fans the opportunity to download their entire music catalog for free. Today, De La Soul's albums continue to be unavailable online. Fans whose primary music source is the internet will not be exposed to one of the most influential groups in music history until we find a way to change it. Ladies and gentlemen, it is with a great sense of honor and privilege that I present the 2014 Webby Artist of the Year Award to one of the greatest groups ever, De La Soul. Mirror, mirror on the wall, tell me, mirror, what is wrong? Can it be my De La clothes or is it just my De La soul? What I do ain't make believe. Testing. One, two. Check one, two.